Good morning on my way to work got to thinking about it you know my I just found out my wife's pregnant we're gonna have another baby and uh, had an employee that just had their they just had their first baby and uh, they induced her and um, ended up that she had a c-section how about that who have thunk it here lately I don't know what the deal is with inducing people and I realize that if you're way past your due date you can induce somebody but here lately it seems like that's just the thing to do let's induce them because it's a time crunch it's in the way we've got we've got things to do in life come on now we've got money to make well that's part of life to live and I would disagree with that and so here's here's something I got to thinking about I, I thought I'd do something different I'd like to give out some advice on something look I've had seven kids we've had one miscarriage we had seven kids, we lost a baby uh, to a tubal pregnancy, and then of course now we have this other one as well on the way. So we have C-sections, and this is for guys whose wives are having C-sections, probably your first one, or maybe it's your second one, and you kind of, you know, you weren't really all there for the first one because after all, your first baby and you're kind of so excited about the whole situation so so first thing is this well there's a lot of things but I'm just gonna start with after the c-section up until that point you really just take it to the doctor that morning they you know uh, they give her an IV oh that's one thing if you're up for it that's one thing but I'm not gonna let some trainee give my wife an IV the reason why is my wife particularly has rolling veins, so it's hard to find that IV. Uh, we've been through that over and over again. Look, we're there, I'm paying for a service, and that's what we're gonna get. And so I generally ask for somebody who knows what they're doing, not training, not training, um, to, to give her the IV, and we're smooth. After the C-section, she's resting. Um, the baby goes into the nursery they weigh her they prick her heel or his heel they you know do the blood work whatever yada 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 uh, she's in recovery if your baby's blood sugar drops you do have the option of taking that baby to mama in recovery and letting mama nurse that baby so that the baby's blood sugar can then come back up Okay. The baby is destined and meant to be with mama on mama's chest, feeding, staying warm. I realize that she just had a C-section and yes, well, we need her to recover. I understand that. But in our experience, oh, I don't know, a few times, seven, um, she only recovers for about uh, maybe 45 minutes to an hour. And for the most part, everything's good. I'm just saying, if the blood sugar drops, you have a right to do that. You should. Hey, let's take the baby. No, we're just gonna give her some sort of uh, injection or we're gonna give them some sugar water or we're gonna put some sort of foreign fluid in them. Look, if, you, if you're okay with that, that's fine. If, if that's something you hadn't thought about. But, um, but if you have an objection to it, go for it. I mean, you're paying for this service and that's what we have to realize. That's what we have to realize here, guys is that when we're dealing with hospitals, they're, they know what they're doing, right? They do it all day, every day, right? But at the same time, they're still providing a service for us. And we need to, um, we need to respect their authority on one hand, but on the other hand, uh, we expect a, a service to be provided, okay? They are not gods. They are not, you know, the almighty decision makers. You're paying for a service. Get that through your mind, guys, okay? 
Now, that doesn't mean you become a tyrant. <laughs> that doesn't mean you become a jerk and expect everything done perfectly your way. No. But, look, you did not give up your rights the minute you entered that hospital. You did not. And I, I want to encourage you, gentlemen, to realize that you are the paying customer. The goal of a hospital and a doctor's office should be to please their customers, right? So, um, but at the same time, there is that balance of trusting the doctors and the nurses to do what's right for your baby. The other thing is, is in recovery, not recovery, but after you're in the room and you're staying the night on that comfortable, cozy little bitty couch that they have for you guys, you need to realize something. Her hormones have been adjusting for, you know, nine months and now it's just changed and now her hormones are going to adjust some more. She might get a little moody. She might get a little snappy and frustrated at you. And you need to be all understanding. In other words, in other words, you don't need to snap back. In other words, you don't need to cop an attitude. She's been through a lot. She just had her body cavity just cut wide open and a little person came out. Uh, we're gonna cut some slack to mama, new mama especially, all right? And um, the other thing is, I want you to think about this. When you cut her body open, you pull the baby out, what fills that gap? Air. A lot of air fills that gap. A lot of air. And so what I want you to do is, I want you to understand that if your room starts to smell a little bit because she's got to get rid of some trapped gas, then uh, <laughs> you're just going to have to deal with that, okay? These are things, look, I understand it kind of sounds crude to talk about women farting, but let's be honest here. She's the love of your life. It's not probably the first time you've ever heard her fart. Um, cut her some slack, all right? Uh, she probably has some trapped gas up high around her neck, pressure a lot of pressure, and uh, so this is all going to be good for her. Uh, here's another thing. When she gets up to use the bathroom, because they're going to want her to get her up and move her around a little bit after she's in the room, uh, what's really helpful is that if she takes a pillow and she press it up against the cut, the incision, as she walks to the bathroom and back and maybe around the bed, it always is going to help her in, in maneuvering and moving around. This has always helped my wife. It's a great deal. So um, these are little things, tricks that you can have. Um, if you have a little boy or a little girl, actually really just for boys, and it doesn't necessarily always work when they're brand new babies, like while you're still at the hospital, but if you want to change a diaper and you got their little bitty legs up and they're pee on you, and, and that's just actually it's a delight that your little, the little person that you love so much, it's like, it's okay. You could pee on me. But if you want to keep that from happening, especially later on as they're older, um, what you have to do, what you, what you do is you lift up their little bitty legs with your hand, right? You got them to, you kind of got their heels together, you kind of got their heels together, and you lift them up, and you wipe their hiney, but you go side to side, rock their little, rock their little legs side to side, side to ever so gently. And what it does is, it seems to do, is it confuses the baby. They don't know, like, they're trying to relax to pee, right? It's a comfort, ah, uh, relax. But if you rock side to side, they're kind of like, what's going on? What's this random motion going on down south here? And while you're doing that, you wipe their hiney and uh, get all the wonderful tar poop off of them. Oh, you'll love the tar poop. It's just a joy to take, you know, it's almost like you have to scrape it off their little hind tiny but um and then of course there's one more thing uh i forgot about when you get home and you have a lot of visitors hanging out and stuff uh you need to uh, uh use the 15 minute rule uh, nobody needs to stay more than 15 minutes your wife's wore out she's tired she just got home you're gonna have visitors church family bringing food that's great let's visit for a few minutes but um after 15 minutes wives need their, your wife either needs to give you the eye the look like I love these people, but I want to rest or, um, you know, whatever it is. We need to feed the baby. And, guys, you need to step up and you need to uh, escort them out nicely, gently. But uh, but you need, to, uh, you need to step up in that way. Look, we're about 
I'm all about men leading. Men being men. And so I want to encourage you to do it that way, okay? I think you're going to do great. You'll do great. Just understand that you're going to love that baby more than anything. And your love for your wife, if it's anything like mine, when my wife's sick or hurt or even in the hospital, it's awesome how God allows our love for our our, our spouses to, to swell, you know? We want to take care of them. We want to love them. We want to um, to help them however we can. Just do that, okay? And do it well. Uh, understand they're gonna they're gonna throw, maybe they're gonna get emotional. Maybe cry randomly. They don't know. And he, and here's the final thing: when you take them home, I know it's a scary ride because you're thinking, oh no, I'm gonna drive the safest I've ever driven ever. And we're going to take the path of least resistance where there's no cars, no chance of getting hit. i got to get this baby home. That's normal also. But understand this. Within a day or two, she's going to get overwhelmed. And she'll probably have this, these thoughts, especially with her hormones changing, of how am I going to do this? How am I going to be a mom? How am I going to raise this child? How am I going to do it? At this point, it's time for men to lead. It's time to step up and love her and take care of them and support her and her feelings and understand that hormones are changing. You're not gonna argue her out of this. Um, you just need to be there to listen and to support and comfort her. All right, that's it. Go to work, because I'm going to work and uh, we'll talk to you later.